show you how Geometry and Algebra 2 Take out your notebook, there's a lot to do Mr. Kennedy here, your favorite math teacher. Welcome. You're looking very mathy today. I'd love to teach you a lesson on similar triangles. You ready for adventure? You do the math. Hey, determining if two triangles are similar is so easy. All you have to do is find two pairs of angles that are equal. When you have similar triangles, you're able to set up proportions. Then you can cross multiply and solve for whatever you want. This just in. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. More on this story as it develops. All right, it's time to do some problems. I'm going to do a couple from the review sheet that I think are more challenging. And the rest you can do on your own. Let's begin. Let's do number five. Cinco de Matho for my Spanish-speaking friends. <laughs> so number five says, uh, find the altitude of an equilateral triangle if one side is 20. So let's draw an equilateral triangle. There she blows. One side is 20, so they're all 20. It's equilateral. Altitude is perpendicular to the base. Right? So we've got really, splits it into two triangles. All right? Here's something that I know. An equilateral triangle, all the angles are equal, and they're all 60 degrees. 60 plus 60 plus 60 is 180 degrees that you need for a triangle. So this here is 60, this is 60, and guess what? If you split it in half, if you bisect that angle, you get 30 and 30. <gasps> this is a special triangle. Let me lasso this. Hiya! So look at what I have here. 60, 30, Remember the special relationship. Across from the 30 is x, the hypotenuse is 2x, the other side is x radical 3. So let me kind of apply that to this problem. Here's the 30, here's the 60. All right, what do I know? The hypotenuse is 20, okay? So if 2x is 20, x is 10, and this is 10 radical 3. That's the answer. They're looking for the height of the, the length of the altitude, right? Are you giving me an altitude? Yeah, it's 10 radical 3. All right, let's move on. Let's do number 10 from your review sheet. This one's about rhombi, which is the plural of rhombus. I used to have a cat named Rhombus, by the way. I think I told you all that. She was so cute, just like a little rhombus. So anyway, let me read this problem. If the side of a rhombus is 15. Remember, a rhombus has all equal sides. So if one of them is 15, they're all 15. So here's a rhombus. Oh, beautiful. Not bad. So the side is 15. OK. What else? One diagonal is 24. Find the other. All right, well, let's say this one's 24. There's the other one that slices right through it, OK? Now, there's a couple properties of rhombi that you should know by now. The diagonals bisect each other. They chop each other in half. So instead of writing a 24, I'm going to write 12 and 12. Also, they form right angles. They're perpendicular, in other words. All right, so I have right triangles there, OK? So look, let me just lasso one of these right triangles here. How about this one? Gotcha, yeehaw! So lasso that. Let me kind of move it out of the way. This side was 12. This side is 15, right? I want to find that missing side. That'll help me towards the answer. All right, I could use Pythagorean theorem once I get to this point. Instead, I recognize this as a triple, OK? Remember, 3, 4, 5 is the most common triple. But multiples of that are also triples, OK? So look, this is 4 times 3. This is 5 times 3. So this would make sense to be 3 times 3, 9. 
right? If you could not figure that out or didn't recognize it, you could do x squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared. Solve that and you'll come out to 9 anyway, all right? So this little piece is 9. They want the length of the other diagonal. So if this is 9, so is this because they bisect each other. 9 plus 9 is 18. You heard it here, for folks. <laughs> Whoops, what did I almost say? You're in 10th grade. If you don't know 9 plus 9 equals 18, you're getting left back to kindergarten. All right, so save up your pennies for recess so you can buy a nice little juice box. All right, ready for another problem? I thought so. Let's do it. By a round of applause, who loves math? Okay, a couple. All right. Okay. So here's number 11. Bloop, there it is. I'm going to read the problem right off of my page. Um, it says in right triangle ABC, you got to draw the thing. <laughs> so there's a right triangle, any way you want. There's the right angle. Now, before I label it A, B, and C, let me read the paper and figure out if they give me any clues as to how to do it. So they say CD is the altitude drawn to hypotenuse AB. Ha ha! The hypotenuse is AB. So this must be C. Okay, so this would make sense. It says the altitude CD. So it starts at C and it's going to the other side. This is where D is. Altitude is always perpendicular to the base of a triangle. So this is one of those triple right triangle problems that we've done a million of. Now what does it say? CD is 2. AD is 3 less than DB. Well, I don't know how long DB is, so make it X. That's 3 less than X. All right, so let me move on. Find the length of AB. So let me find X, and then I'll plug it in. All right, so here's the way that I do it. A lot of teachers teach it different ways, okay, with memorizing different formulas and proportions and stuff. I do it more visual, okay? Let's look for two triangles in this diagram that have two sides each. So I see this little triangle. I'll shade it in. The little triangle has a 2 and an X, right? And what else? How about this medium triangle here? I'll squiggle it. That has a 2 and an X minus 3, right? So those are the two triangles I'm dealing with. Is there any part of this diagram that's reflexive between those two? Yeah, you're right. This CD is a reflexive side between the small triangle and the medium triangle in my diagram. So when you have a reflexive part, that goes diagonal in the proportion, right? And then you fill in the other pieces. So x and x minus 3 are the other two. Fill in the blanks. We cross multiply when a fraction is equal to a fraction. So I would get x times x is x squared minus 3x, the distributive property, equals 4. How do you solve something with an x squared? Get it equal to 0. So this would be x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. Now factor with a double bubble. x and x. What multiplies to 4 but subtracts to give me 3, 4, and 1? The signs don't match. The bigger is negative. Give it an old t-bar. Remember when you're skiing, you learn how to ski on the t-bar. This is not really like that. So I have x equals 4 and x equals negative 1. Look, this is real. This is geometry, right? Can I have a side of a triangle that's negative 1? No way, Jose, right? I don't know why Jose's always the guy that's taking the blame for this, but no way, Jose. <laughs> so four is my answer. This one works. Plug it in, plug it in. <laughs> X equals four. X minus three is one. Okay? So the question was asking, always go back and read the question again. It's saying how long is AB? One plus four not drawn to scale, by the way, is 5. So there's my final answer. Wonderful? That's what I thought. Well, mathematicians, you know what this sound means. <laughs> means we're out of time. I, I don't know what the heck it means, but we're out of time. Hope you had a great, wonderful experience enriching and changing your life. Now you're all going to be the valedictorian, right? It'll be a hundred-way tie. Anyway. This is my hundred-way tie. Ooh, time to go home, right? Mr. Kennedy, leave the building, for goodness sakes. I hope you had fun. I'm Mr. Kennedy, your favorite teacher. May the math be with you.